Archbishop of Sydney since 2003. 2001. 2001. <laughs> 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 Originally from Ballarat, Cardinal Kell was ordained a priest in 1966 in, in, in St. Peter's Basilica, Rome. In 1987, he was ordained an assistant bishop for Melbourne. In 1966, Pope Blessed John Paul II announced Cardinal Pell's appointment as 7th Metropolitan Archbishop of Melbourne, which he held until he was appointed to Sydney. In 2003, he was created a Cardinal Priest of Rome and subsequently participated in the conclave that elected Pope Benedict XVI. Cardinal Pell holds a Doctorate of Philosophy in History from Oxford. He also writes a regular column in the Sunday Telegraph. He has publicly spoken out against abortion and, and euthanasia. He is a climate change skeptic and disagrees with the use of any form of artificial contraception. A well-known and often controversial figure, Cardinal Pell is also known among Catholics as a visionary leader and a fearless shepherd. He is also our, our key patron and strong supporter. Cardinal Pell is an engaging speaker with a brilliant mind and will be taking questions regarding the church and its teachings. We are delighted to welcome him here. Thank you, Anne Marie, for those uh, kind words of uh, introduction. Um, some of you might have heard of an Australian uh, poet, an Irish Australian poet called John O'Brien. He actually, his real name was Monsignor John Hartigan. He was a rather difficult priest with his assistant priests, but uh, he wrote all these uh, poems about Irish Australian life, especially in the country. They're very beautiful and they, they capture an age which is now uh, past. One of the figures that is still sometimes quoted is Hanrahan. And Hanrahan was an Irish Australian who used to stand outside the church after Mass and no matter what the circumstances were, he'd always say, We'll all be ruined, said San, and said Hanrahan, before the year is out. That there were, so if it was, uh, wasn't raining, drought would get them. Uh, if it rained, uh, then there'd be floods. And if it kept raining, then there'd be too much growth and they'd have bushfires. So no matter what, uh, uh, what was happening, we were, they were going to be ruined. And my, Speech, but a few words of introduction today might sound a little bit in that tradition. Uh, but I think I, uh, I haven't got spe specific uh, figures in, uh, on all sorts of things, but I can get them and get them to Daniel if you were seriously interested or felt they weren't true. But the family is uh, passing through a profound... Uh, period of crisis, uh, also here in Australia, but in many parts of the, uh, of the Western world. Profound crisis. <coughs> One of the great catalysts uh, for that was the invention of the uh, contraceptive pill, and uh, which uh, I think came onto the market about 62. It was regarded as being a great liberator. It wouldn't be on wanted pregnancies. Marriages would be happier because there would be less uh, uh, pressure. Uh, husbands and wives would have more sex together. Those who weren't following natural family uh, planning. And it was going to introduce a, a, a new and, and better age. And uh, obviously now, women are more able to control their fertility. And that's appreciated by many people. But it's had many, many uh, possibly unexpected uh, consequences right across society. Well, first of all, it took away the, uh, not completely, but to a large extent, uh, the fear of unwanted pregnancy. So uh, that liberated a whole, whole waves of uh, promiscuity. 
And that was uh, captured and solidified in the Western world uh, by music from very uh, from great musical groups uh, like the Beatles and um, Mick Jagger, what was he, the Rolling Stones. And they uh, captured the, the imagination of the young people uh, at that stage. So in, there's no country in the Western world which is now producing enough children to keep the population steady. Uh, steady. Some, some of the worst countries are Catholic countries like uh, Spain and Italy, but the very worst uh, country um, is Russia, which is already dropping in population by 800, 750,000 a year to 800,000 a year. It's a combination of uh, multiple abortions. I've heard people who seriously say that we're, you know, the women, many women are having seven or eight abortions. I don't believe that. I'm a doubting Thomas. I want stats. But it looks as though many of them are having multiple abortions. The other great uh, thing that's uh, uh, collapsing the mortality rate is uh, alcoholism amongst uh, the men. Uh, and that often makes them uh, eventually less fertile than they might be, but it kills them off early. And so they're not living this, so there are fewer people being born, and uh, especially the fellows are dying you know, earlier. And this, all these sort of factors came together in the 90s, and this great uh, collapse uh, followed. Giving another foreign example, Lyndon uh, Baines Johnson started a program called, uh, I think it was the Great Society, I might have the name slightly wrong. He, he took over from uh, John Kennedy when Kennedy was shot in 63. And he was, uh, it was a, a, a great program. Uh, it was to help society, especially the black community, to get the, to look after their kids and get them together, get them out of poverty. And there was a senator called Daniel Moynihan. And Moynihan said, all the gains that this, all the gains that these uh, programs will make, will be rubbed out by increasing family disintegration among the blacks, amongst the uh, Afro-Americans. And that was largely true. Now the interesting uh, statistic is that what was the level of family disintegration amongst the Afro-American community uh, back then, uh, probably 45 years ago, there is now the same level of disintegration in the white communities in the United States. And we're roughly following a similar pattern. I was talking to Robbie George, a professor from Princeton. He was saying there are now corners in the, uh, the United States, uh, pockets in the United States, where families aren't forming. They're just not any sort of families. They're just not uh, uh, getting together uh, with their um, kids. Now, we're, we're on a, a somewhat uh, similar path. Uh, fewer people are getting married. Uh, more babies are being born uh, out of uh, wedlock. The level of uh, divorce is leveled out, but it's mainly leveled out because people aren't married. And if you don't marry, uh, you can't get divorced. You just uh, separate. I'm not sure that there's been any decrease in the uh, number of abortions, so still I think it's running plus or minus 90,000 a year uh, across Australia. And what is often uh, unacknowledged is that this is having uh, very real consequences on the kids. Now some of you might have come from broken families, and I'm not criticizing anybody or condemning. Uh, we're all caught up in the spirit of the, uh, of the age in which we live, and nobody's uh, perfect. But if you come from a broken family, you'll have some very real idea of uh, what I'm talking about, about the suffering. It's not just the, 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 the spouses that split up who suffer, it's also the kids who suffer. And for a long time the theory was that if the parents are fighting, it's much better for the kids, they'll turn out much better if the parents separate and stop their fight. The statistics don't show that. Short of actual physical violence, the kids from families that stay together, on nearly all measures, um, do better. 
most spectacular examples of family uh, disintegration we've got are in the uh, Aboriginal <coughs> communities. You know, drugs, and alcohol, and pornography, and sexual abuse, and it's difficult to know where you start. I've been up to what I was Port Keats's mission, what air, and the kid, we had a, there was some sort of a ceremony out in the open, and you know, a mob of Aboriginal kids uh, came in, and then halfway through the show, they danced off and went somewhere else. <coughs> You know, in a way which wouldn't be tolerated, say, down in our schools. And I was talking to one of the teachers, and he said, yeah, well, if, if people are being fighting and carrying on all night back at home, uh, you, you, can't, uh, you can't be surprised that the kids are restless uh, during the day. One of the Aboriginal the Catholic elders uh, up there at this place, uh, he was so, got so sick of the damage that alcohol was doing. And when the pension day comes, most of the men and women all go to the, the pub to, to, to get the money. So he got a front end loader and he drove it through the, lit, the alcohol store <laughs> uh, and quickly demolished it. Because they all came and pinched the drop. <laughs> and uh, none were telling me that as they were wandering around, some of the locals they get up there quick sister, there's biscuits still left. So. Now that's an extreme, that's not our situation, it's an extreme and a tragic situation, but there'd be pockets in different uh, suburbs um, around like that. It's diminishing our social capital. And so one of our uh, great ambitions would be for the overwhelming majority of you to be able to enter into a happy uh, lifelong marriage. And I think the great challenge for leaders and for governments is to try to stabilize family life, not because it's Christian, because families predate Christianity, but because it's socially useful uh, and good, and it will cost uh, much less in the, uh, in the long run. Well, we believe the family is based on what we call natural law, the best way of human flourishing, one man, one woman, open to life, Therefore, children. So I might. Uh